Today, the worst kept secret in the world is India's growth story. Anyone with even half a brain knows that because of demographic dividend, huge latent potential and rise of disposable incomes, India's economy and by extension the market cap of Indian companies is going only one way, that is up. Report after reports by many reputed journals and economists predict that Indian GDP to hit $15 trillion between 2035 to 40. The problem is of course lies in the fact that the trajectory of that growth is never smooth. How the market behaves in the short term is impossible to predict. So to invest and profit from India's growth story, the simplest way is to stay invested in the broad market and keep it at it with discipline for the next 15-20 years. However, we face two problems with it. First is, it calls for patience and temperament that many people struggle with. Let's be honest, it is not easy to hold the now when you see your portfolio going down or not moving for a few months or quarters. And second, you will have to forego short-term potential in generating alpha. It means to benefit from long-term investment in the short term, you might not be able to beat the index. So the question here is, what is the best way to position your portfolio to ensure that while you benefit in the long term, you will also have a better chance at generating that alpha in the short run. A great underutilized way is called factor investing. I'm sure majority of you would not be aware about this factor investing concept. So in this video, we'll try to understand what exactly is factor investing and how you can invest in that. Since this concept of factor investing would be relatively new to many of you, I would suggest watching this video till the end. All right, let's get started. Historically, when the mutual funds were formed, the majority of them were active mutual funds where the fund manager would actively manage the portfolio by buying and selling stocks with an ultimate goal to beat the benchmark and generate more than benchmark returns, that is generate that alpha. But here there are three major drawbacks with this approach. First drawback is that mutual fund performance is in a wide range. In last 10 years, nearly 80 to 90% large cap and mid cap mutual funds have underperformed the broad benchmark. Hence, selecting a winner mutual fund is a challenge. Second, mutual fund managers can get biased while picking the fund. And third drawback is high expense ratio due to which it becomes difficult for active mutual funds to beat the index. Hence, passive fund that is index fund started gaining popularity. They are low cost mutual funds and would simply replicate the indices like your Nifty or Sensex. But they also have one problem. At max, they can match the return of the index. They can't outperform the index. Moreover, you don't always want to invest in all the companies within that index. So let me give you four cases to help you understand the situation. In case one, let's say you want to invest in Nifty 50 index fund but avoid stocks with high volatility. In case two, you might want to invest in Nifty 100 index but want to allocate money only in stocks that are showing upward momentum. Case three, you might want to invest in mid cap or small cap index but avoid stocks with low liquidity. And case four, it could be a combination where you want to invest in Nifty 200 stocks but pick only the momentum and quality stocks. And hence, third way of investment was introduced which is called smart beta investing or in other words, factor investing. The benefit of factor investing is that it gives you the advantage of low cost investing similar to passive funds as well as help you maximize the risk adjusted returns. So in simple words, smart beta or factor investing is nothing but a methodology that uses various factors to build a portfolio other than the traditional market cap based weighing methodology. For example, Nifty 50 index simply consists of top 50 companies of India in terms of market cap. That's it. Market cap is the only parameter here. So all stocks within Nifty 50 index would have the weightage as per their market cap. Then you have Nifty 100 index that consists of top 100 companies of India in terms of market cap and likewise. So this bifurcation is purely by market cap. And as we discussed within an index, you will have all sorts of stocks. Some are high risk, some are high return, some are value stocks, some are growth stocks and so on. And as an investor, you might want to avoid highly volatile stocks or avoid stocks with low liquidity and so on. And that's where factor investing, that is smart beta comes into picture. So factor investing would use various factors to create different portfolios. For example, considering the current volatile market, many investors are looking at low volatile stocks. So low volatile factor would neglect stocks that have high volatility. 
it would only pick stocks that have low volatility. Likewise, you might want to invest in dividend stocks. So one of the factor could be dividend stocks that offers good dividend. Then another example of factor could be momentum investing where you bet on stocks that are winning the game and generating high returns. So like I said, there could be multiple factors and based on those factors, you can pick the factor that suits your investment style and market condition to invest in stocks that could potentially generate that alpha over the benchmark. Now the biggest question is how to invest using factor investing. So here there are two approaches. First approach is you directly identify your risk profile and shortlist the right factor fund that suits your investment style and invest your money. There are multiple factor funds available in the market. But there's only one problem with this approach. In most of the cases, investors don't know their risk profile and end up selecting wrong factor fund. So there is an app called Eliver that offers factor investing, also known as Eliver Factors. I've been exploring this app from last few months and I've invested in some of the factor funds. Let me give you a quick demo of this app. When you download Eliver app and start using it for the first time, you need to complete your profile and give a quiz. This quiz would help you understand your risk profile. And this risk profile assessment is very important before investing the money because in many cases, people end up investing in high risk stocks in spite of having a low risk appetite and end up panicking. So this quiz on Eliver app would help you identify your risk profile and generate a risk score. Once your risk score is generated, you can go to their home section and on bottom you'll find options of factor. Once you click on that and then click on get started, you'll find multiple Eliver factors for you. Here you should note one thing. Currently Eliver has 10 factor funds, but it would recommend the Eliver factors based on your risk score. So in my case, my risk score is 79, which is aggressive high. So I can see all the Eliver factors. Now let me show you three Eliver factors where I have invested my money. So first Eliver factor is contra stories. The biggest mistake that investors end up doing in stock market is they tend to run behind the stocks that have already generated high returns. So when a stock does well, everyone starts talking about it. And that result in investors end up buying the stock generally when it has already jumped a lot. This is called recency bias as well as herd mentality. But history suggests that investors make money when they invest in high quality business, when there's a good correction in the share price and the business is available at attractive valuation. And time and again, we have observed that there is correction even in high quality business due to short term factors. And contrast stories try to effectively capture these underappreciated quality business across Indian large cap and mid cap space and hence create wealth for the investor in the long term. Moreover, since the investment is concentrated towards high quality businesses, the portfolio provides strong defense during the bearish phase in the market. So here you can download the fact sheet and check the details of this Eliver factor. For example, its benchmark is Nifty 200, total number of holding is 10, minimum investment is rupees 75,000, CAGR return since inception is 24.9%, expense ratio is 1%, and currently it has 75.4% allocation in large cap and 24.6% in mid cap, and rebalancing happens annually. Now to get access to the portfolio and invest your money, you need to first subscribe to these Eliver factors. So when you click on next, it will ask you to enter the amount. You need to enter at least the minimum amount and then click next. Then it will show you the subscription charge. And when you click on subscribe now, it will show you the amount that you need to pay for subscription. Please note that here you are not investing the money. You are only paying the subscription fee. Once you do that, it will show you the entire portfolio with percentage weightage of each stock. For example, it includes ITC with 16.8% weight, HCL Tech with 11.8% weight, Tech Mahindra, Havels, then SBI card, and few more stocks. Now here you need to place order to invest your money. And this will happen with your broker. So Eliver will only facilitate the transaction by connecting you with your respective broker. And they have collaborated with all the top brokers. For example, in my case, I invest via Zerodha, so I can select Zerodha and invest my money. Please note that all the investment will be stored in your DMAT account. Eliver is only facilitating the investment. It is not holding your stocks. And you can always see those stocks in your trading account as well. I hope you got the idea about the entire process. Then second Eliver factor I found interesting was low volt shield. Since currently the market is in volatile state, Low Wall Shield goal is to protect the portfolio from high volatility during the bear phase and also generate a significant alpha during the recovery period. 
If you want to understand the investment philosophy in detail, then you can click on fact sheet that will show you all the details, including the operational information, as well as portfolio characteristics, like its benchmark is Nifty 100, low volatility, 30 index, there are 15 holdings. The minimum investment for low wall shield is 30,000 rupee and expense ratio is 0.6%. An entire 100% money is invested in large cap. By the way, although these LUO factors are recently introduced, they have been back tested for last 10, 15 years of data against their benchmark. And you can see the return performance as well as risk measures. For example, low wall shield has generated 17% return in last 10 years against benchmark, which is Nifty 100 low volatility, 30 index, that has generated 14.3% return and 16.67% return in last 15 years against benchmark return of 12.9%. If you look at the risk aspect, in 10 years while low wall shield volatility is similar to benchmark, in 15 years the volatility is lower than benchmark. That has resulted in better risk adjusted returns as compared to benchmark. You can also see the worst drawdown of low wall shield against the benchmark. For example, during COVID crash, low wall tank 25.3%, whereas Nifty 100 low volatility 30 index tank 30.6%. Now again, to get access to the portfolio and invest your money, you need to first subscribe to these Eliva factors. Once you subscribe, you see the entire portfolio. For example, low wall shield include HDFC Bank with 6.4% weightage, Dabur with 6.4%, then it includes Sun Pharma, Airtel, IOC, Kotak Bank and so on. Then third Eliva factor that I found very interesting is growth gurus. The simple reason behind selecting this factor fund is because Indian economy is poised to become the third largest economy in the world. Factors like rising income and spending levels would significantly boost the growth of Indian companies. And hence, I've opted for growth gurus that essentially try to capture the growth of Indian economy with a balance between both large cap that would continue to be the leader in the sector and mid cap stocks that would become the large cap in the coming years. The interesting part of Growth Guru is that it provides both growth potential, but at the same time, provide a moderate downside protection. For more details, you can download the fact sheet that shows its benchmark as Nifty 200 and has 10 stocks in the portfolio with minimum investment of 1 lakh rupee and has generated a CGR return of 24.3% since inception in December 2005. It has an expense ratio of 1% and currently it has 72.2% exposure in large cap and 27.8% in mid cap and rebalancing happens on quarterly basis. Then you can compare its performance against the benchmark for one year, three year, five, 10, 15 years, and since inception. If you look at it, year to date in last one year, it is not able to beat the benchmark. But in the long run, it has significantly beaten the benchmark. Likewise, you can study its volatility against the benchmark and the worst drawdown periods. Similarly, Eliver has few more Eliver factors like dividend titans, wealth defender, value bargain, hidden value, and so on. So overall, the idea behind Eliver Factor is to first help you understand your risk profile and then it suggests the right factor fund that can help you generate that alpha considering your risk profile. I think it is a great idea where you can shortlist stocks as per your investment style and preference that include your low volatility stock, momentum stock, dividend players, high quality business, value stock, etc. Yes, it is still in nascent stage, but as I mentioned, these LUO factors are back tested as long as 15 years. So I think it is worth giving it a shot. By the way, if you start investing in LUO factor before 31st March from the link in the description, you will get Amazon voucher worth rupees 1000. So do check out the LUO factors. I hope you'll find this video useful. If you have any query, let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.